So yeah, I actually saw Radioactive, God, ages ago. It was one of the last films I saw before life went weird um, in the cinema. So I have seen it on the big screen, which is good, because I interviewed Sam Riley for it back when we were allowed to see normal humans. So that was quite good fun. Uh, right, I'm going to get started because I know I haven't got too long. But I my first question was what it was that just initially attracted you to, to getting involved in Radioactive. I'm always, I mean, whenever a project comes along, it's always for me the writing characters and um obviously when i heard in a biopic about marie curie i sort of thought well you think you know about that person but with this script i think it uncovers so much more behind sort of um what we all think we know of her um you know the nobel prize winner um etc and so um so it was that but also i suppose with the character that i play i play her sister in this I was really drawn to their relationship um, and, um, and how much they fought um, to be a part of the sort of scientific and medical world. And so that challenge, I suppose, really um, appealed to me. Yeah, because I think Mary, I, I'm sort of jealous, um, uh, guilty of being one of those people who I just knew the name Mary Curie, like you said, and I'd, I'd seen it a million times and I, I would have felt that I could hold my own in a conversation about it. But it's when I saw the movie, I realised I knew nothing about her at all. But that, that must be one of the great kind of joys for you being an actress is you're kind of constantly learning about new people and new times and stuff. I think it's, it's kind of at this this profession where you're just dipping in and out of time periods and different people and different understandings of, of the world. It must be um, a great aspect to, to your career is the, the notion of kind of education, the educational side to it, I suppose. I actually think that's probably one of my favourite parts of my job, really, that and uh, sort of working within a company. But I always love um, sort of dipping into different worlds that I meant never sort of come across ordinarily in my own life. And, and I always find it sort of, it is like a brief um, A-level, I suppose, in, you know, different subjects, you dive in, and then the things that you uncover, uncover um, it fascinates me. So it's like a sort of history lesson and a social lesson, you know, all interweaved. Um, so yeah, that aspect, I always love it. And I feel like you're trying to portray especially with this, it's a, a different century, a different time. You're trying to portray these characters as real as possible. And I think the thing that you have to arm yourself with is information. And so I always feel like at the beginning of every job, it's like an empty backpack, really. And you just fill it full of the world and as much information as you can, because whether or not you know it, I think it all feeds through into however you play it. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it, but despite that, that that educational side to it, it must be, does it tap into quite a childlike quality as well? Because I guess when we're in terms of like being on a set and the costumes and stuff like that, because even when I go to kind of, you know, Disneyland or theme parks or something, there's something about kind of uh, themed parks and stuff. And just this idea of everything kind of being dressed up to make you feel like you're somewhere you're not. And I just wondered if it, if it taps into quite a, a playful part of you that, that reminds you of why you got into acting in the first place. You were supposed to because it's sort of like you choose, I suppose when you're a kid, I mean, I've got two little boys and and they choose a certain um, genre or, you know, whatever they're going to play today or I'm going to be a shopkeeper or I'm going to be a spy or whatever. And they really throw themselves into that world. And I suppose with anything, the more you know about that world, the, re the more you can sort of submerge yourself in it. And I think it does really, it taps into your imagination. And, and so, um, yeah, I just think the knowledge is power, isn't it? And the more knowledge you have about a certain um, subject, um, then the easier it is for you to play in a way. Yeah. And I just been, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm sure you've spoken about working Rosamond before, but 
she she's one of those actresses who I, I've 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 interviewed her a couple of times, and I think she she's one of those people where she get you can just tell she's so committed to the part that she's playing. You just you just get this impression that she's someone that gives everything, and it comes through in her performances. What was it like working alongside? Because most of your scenes are with her. What's it like working alongside someone like that? Someone who's just who gives everything to to a character and to a, and to a project. It must really help raise the game of, of everyone around her. Absolutely, I loved working with Rosamund. She's 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 extremely bright. She's an extremely bright woman, but she is so focused on what she wants to achieve. She put ego aside. It's sort of about what the job is and the task is, and she honours the part, especially with this. I think she, um, I mean, she herself has said that Marie Curie became a sort of heroine for her. She really was honouring that lady's life. Um, and so I think she, um, to work with her, when she's in the room, her focus is so intense that you sort of get swept up in it. And um, she was a total joy to work with. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she had a lot of material available to her. Did you did you have much on, on your role? Was there was there is there much out there on 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 the yeah, character? Yeah, I mean, there's not a huge amount on her sister, but they the whole family were with such a ferociously intelligent bunch of people. I think if I met them today, I'd be quite you know intimidated. But um, yeah, I think her her sister was um a, um in the medical profession she was a gynecologist and so but it, the two of them she her sister so they were both from poland and her sister paris first to um to study and between them they made this pact that if bronya went to study in paris that maria would finance her studies so maria would work to pay for bronya's studies and in turn if maria made it to paris one you would do the same and so I think that's a phenomenal sort of connection between them and commitment to each other just as women but as sisters and that bond and um so yeah I think that really fed into it um of their connection throughout the film and I hope it's sort of comes through. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't say that I'd do that for my brother. <laughs> I'd like. I'd like to think I would, but I. I, I can't say. Time has changed. Time has changed. Um. Yeah, but I mean, Johnny, and then just a, another word as well, Marjan, because I mean, she's so. I've in, I've interviewed her years or years ago, and she's such a force of nature as well. I mean, because I think it's so easy for audience members when we, especially when and people like me, when we interview actors and actresses about the projects, we always talk about the method and the characters, but sometimes the people you surround yourselves with is what makes a project great and sometimes what makes a project not so great. And to have people like her around must have been great because she is just, I just remember meeting her and I was just on a cloud for the rest of the day. She is, and she's like that. And it's so funny that you use that term force of nature because that is exactly what I say about her. She enters the room and you know she's there. She's got so much, she's vibrant. There's so much energy emanating from her. But she, um, as soon as I met her, well, I remember because I'd seen her film years ago, which is just stunning, superb. And I urge anyone to watch Persepolis, which is a film that she's very well known for. Um, and so when I met her, I was like, oh gosh, because obviously I was a huge fan. But she just cut straight to it. She's, she's hugely intelligent, funny, um, anarchic, um, surprising, you know, yeah. So it, it was a joy to work with her. And she sort of just lets you, she's very um, understanding of how actors work. And so she sort of casts somebody and allows them and trusts them to um, come and sort of do the job that they're meant to do. So she sort of said, well, I've cast you for a reason. And then she just lets you play. So she doesn't interfere too much and she'll just, you know, add in the odd sort of thing now and again to sort of steer you. But yeah, I love working with her. Mm. And I, I, I haven't seen it yet, unfortunately, but Body of Water is, I was reading up about that earlier, which looks like a really fascinating project. I'm just wondering about how much of an undertaking that role was for you, because it seems like a really quite a complex, nuanced character for you to get your teeth stuck into, but a real joy, I suppose, for, for an actress to be given a, character, a role like that. Yeah, it was. It was, um, 
so it's actually charts um a woman who um sort of comes out the other side of an eating disorder clinic who has been plagued with this illness for most of her life um and so physically it meant that i had to lose uh quite a lot of weight i think in, in the end it was sort of just under two stone so physically that was a huge undertaking but also mentally it is because you want to serve this um you know uh this subject matter and not in any way be light-hearted about it because it's something that affects so many people and as you say you said you said it was a nuanced character what interested me or sort of drew me to the project was that she wasn't what we all typically think about with possibly an eating disorder he said it's a young girl you know finding their way in the world this is a woman who could stand on her own two feet she was successful she was a war photographer and journalist and yet this very complex illness she was unable to shake it really um and so it was all of those complexities that drew me to the project um and the phenomenal writing of lucy um who's the di director and writer um uh but yeah I, I think overall it was probably the physical demand of losing the weight yeah in order to play. yeah, yeah. Because I was, wonder, I was wondering about if, if that, that, with that in mind, I guess the character, you couldn't shake the character at the end of a day's shoot. Because I guess in some ways you were carrying, because you had to change yourself physically for the character. I guess the whole way through the process, you were kind of the character, if that makes sense. That must have been quite a, quite a different, yeah, I mean, it must have been quite uh, overwhelming, I suppose. And when it was over, was it a sense of relief yeah. to, to go back to, to your to normal life and to, to, to or, or was, was yeah. it you sort of, yeah. Yeah, it was. And I'm also really, aware of the fact that um i was able to do that you know i was i was able to do that and um i don't take that lightheartedly either you know um but it, it was it, it did it did sort of stay with me as you say because <laughs> because i sort of transformed myself in order to be able to portray this woman's struggle as as, as honestly as i could um and i remember when I read the script, I I was very nervous when I read the script because obviously I got this call to say, look, you know, they're interested in you saying this and what the subject matter was. And I, I was really nervous because I thought, well, if I really like this script and this story, then I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> because I'm the sort of person I am. I get drawn in and I go, oh, I have to, so if I, I believe in the story, this character, I've got to tell this. So I read it and, and Lucy's writing is, was just, it, it, for, for a sort of, it was, you know, a first feature film, it was, sometimes things can be overwritten, this isn't, it's sort of, um, and it, it wasn't on the page and, and also a, a, the character. So I, I, I put the script down at the end and I thought, oh dear <laughs> because i knew i knew that what you know what the world was and what i would have to do in order to portray it honestly um but yeah that's the thing i'm, I'm sort of i couldn't help but enter into it yeah oh, i can't wait to see it you, is there is there any kind of news on when that's gonna because i know it appeared glasgow didn't it yes yeah, so mm. in glasgow and yeah we were hoping that yeah i think it would be well the pandemic hit um but i think on the other side i don't think it will be too long before it's out there um, the business. um so yeah fingers crossed so we i think the yeah the, about a month ago that, 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 yeah. Yeah. so i just find i'm a sort of final question really was just i mean i just i'm interested when i'm speaking to actors and actresses and filmmakers and stuff people who are so creative and move from project to project and often do a lot of traveling for their work just how you found the kind of the change of lifestyle with lockdown have, have you been because i personally i've actually i think I've, i found it too i've almost become it's almost become my normal i'm almost now a little bit apprehensive about going back to the, the the normal world but I was wondering how you've managed to stay have you been able to do any work in this time is there any kind of have you been reading any scripts or are you just using this as a nice downtime well um I'd love to say that I've been able to do lots of work and read lots of scripts but um we have two little boys and so the joys of homeschooling somewhat um 
yeah, they somewhat sort of take over. But um, uh, it's been, I feel like now I'm probably institutionalised by the lockdown, if you, do you know what I mean? I've, yeah, I'm I've, the same. I've, I've sort of got in the groove um, so much that in a way I am a bit, I was talking to somebody the other day and I said to, to get on a tube or, you know, a packed tube or whatever is just going to be quite um, a different sort of feeling now. I can't actually imagine that. Um, but, but yeah, it is, you know, because my husband, he works, he works in theatre. He's a theatre director. Um, well, I'm still, but he's in theatre predominantly. And, and myself, we're all here, there and everywhere. And, um, and so... It's been actually, it's been lovely to be able to spend the time together as a youth. So that's been quite special, but um, I am sort of chomping at the bit now to try and uh, get back to some, some sort of normality, whatever that will be. Yeah. No, I'm the same. The idea right now of having to leave my house to get a specific train at a specific time and then get on the train full of people, it just feels terrifying <laughs> right, it's sort of like another universe that that yeah it really does but I, I agree with you though my my wife's a lawyer so she works like really long hours and I'm kind of always at screenings and stuff in Soho in my evenings so it's been this kind of unprecedented amount of actually spending time with each other so it's been it's been quite nice on that front yeah, um, yeah. Those, those little blessings that I think you know time has stopped and um and we can be together yeah I think here we are. My son's coming. Oh, there, <laughs> there you go. See Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nice t-shirt. <laughs> Is there any new TV series or movies that you've got into? Um, what have I been watching? So we've done the obligatory uh, Normal People. Yes, I agree. Is... We did that. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody. And Daisy Edgar Jones is actually in the film that my husband um, directed. So, um, yeah, Pond Life, um, which was a few years back. So I know Daisy, and so it's just, it's been phenomenal to see her. She just portrayed that part so beautifully, and it was like, I just watched that, we, me and my husband watched it, and we just sort of jumped into that world and just devoured it for, you know, three days, and then we're quite bereft that it was over. Um, what else have we watched? Um, uh, Oh, we watched um, The Last Dance. Oh, uh, I need to watch that. Have I've you not watched, seen oh, that. you've got to watch yeah. it. I, I know, I confess I know nothing about basketball, but I urge it, you should watch it. It's just, yeah, everyone's saying that. Just, yeah. you know, <laughs> story of, you know, human stories of it. It's just like, it's incredible. He is just, I don't know, immense as a human being, both yeah. physically and sort of mentally. Um, and then uh, Two Popes. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that was good fun. I loved it. I just thought it was, I really, yeah, I, I loved it as a film, but also I just thought that acting was just another class. Yeah. And yeah, they were just, it was gentle and touching and actually I think probably at this time it's be a really good recommendation for people yeah yeah agreed quite yeah. uplifting i thought and i could yeah. go back and watch that um, yeah yeah well no because I, I was thinking that, that radioactive felt timely just purely off the back of the fact that these kind of scientific kind of magicians who were able to find these incredible kind of uh cures for things i just thought well you never know at the moment we could do with something like that so yeah. I, think so. I do think so i think we're all quite sort of you know um watching what these scientists do and desperate for them to discover something and have that moment uh, that epiphany and so we can all and, and and yeah i think watching that film i just when after we watched it i just came away and thought gosh she's captured marjan has been able to capture you know because it's hard science we always think oh gosh you know when we're at school it's all the scientific equations or whatever how do you how do you portray that in film and the excitement of discovery and naming something and finding elements, whatever, it, you know, it, 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 but she has, um, and she's done it beautifully through that love story. I just, um, yeah, I'm very, very happy to have been involved in that. Yeah. 
well, hopefully the spirit of Mary Curie will rub off <laughs> on, uh, on, on other yeah, scientists working out hopefully, there. hopefully, it's moment yeah. in time, the Mary Curie in a lab somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> coming up with that vaccine, that all-important vaccine. Wow, exactly. Uh, well, look, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Um, oh, and you. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, when all this is, is done and there, um, there might be press for, um, for the next one and I might be able to, we might be able to, I might interview again in person next time, who knows? Yeah. yeah. It would mean getting on one of those weird trains though. <laughs> and then, then, we, then we'd have to get on one of those trains. Yeah. Or maybe we, we'll just cycle there and meet in the park. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> all right, well, well, thank you so much and best of luck with the release of Radioactive and stuff. And yeah, maybe we'll, we'll cross paths again one day. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!